What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So today I wanna to do a video on the bench press. This is gonna actually be both for powerlifting and uh, bodybuilders alike. It's also gonna be both for beginners and advanced trainees. If you are more advanced in your bench press technique, I would say skip forward to the later parts where I talk about the advanced uh, bench press tips that I'm gonna give at the end. Um, but the reason I'm doing it like this is I want to do a video on bench press grip with and shoulder slash elbow position uh, in the bench press movement and what's gonna be best dictated to towards your strength dominances, your anthropometry, the things that make you unique from other humans. Um, so I wanna talk about how to set that up if you've never bench pressed before, where you should be starting with your bench grip width and your elbow position and things like that. And then the later tips are gonna give you ideas on how you can kind of form your grip and your technique over time to fit your uh, anatomical build, your strength dominances, the things that are gonna dictate uh, the things that make you the best bench presser you could be. There isn't one way to bench press for everyone. We are all different and you need to set it up to your own unique build. So let's get into it. First, let's start with the beginners and we'll get into the bad stuff later. If you have never bench pressed before, this is how I want you to start. First of all, go watch my how to bench like a badass video because I explained the overall bench press technique there. But as far as grip position and uh, elbow position, things like that in bench press, there's kind of one unanimous point for everyone to start off with. And then from there you venture out to try your own things. So the first thing is gonna be your grip width. How wide should you go? What I want you to do is when you line up on this bar, select a grip position width that allows you to have your elbow joint stacked directly beneath your wrist joint in the bottom position of the bench press. So for instance, when I get up on this bar, if I go to my normal grip width position, which is very wide out to here, and I get into my bench press setup, you can see here, get a front view for me. Here in the bottom position, my wrists are outside of the elbow joints. The wrist is further out than the elbow joint towards the collars of the bar. But if I narrow my grip to about here, the wrist is stacked directly above the elbow joint, give or take. So what I want you to do when you're playing with your bench press grip width is to select the grip width that allows this elbow to be directly above uh, or excuse me, this wrist to be directly above the elbow in the bottom position. If you go wider than that or too narrow than that, that's probably not gonna be the most ideal spot to, to start with. So start there, and then over time, you're gonna widen or narrow this grip a little bit based on your dominances and your needs, which we'll get into after that. So that's grip width. Once you have your grip width position selected, what I want you to do is get into the bench press like I show in that How to Bench Like a Badass video. And once you are there, and you have this locked out, the next thing we need to talk about is your shoulder and elbow position. You'll hear some people say tuck the elbows. You'll hear some people say flare the elbows more out. There's a lot of different ways to bench press, but what you want to do as a beginner is have a slight tuck to your elbows. This is going to be the safest position for most of you to start with, and it's also going to give you the most even force transfer. And then over time, you can either widen your elbow position a little bit or tuck it more. But what I want you to focus on doing is taking your shoulder blades and pinning them back and down into the bench pad and from there I want you to focus on trying to bend the bar in half as if you're going to snap it in half and while you're doing that make sure you keep your elbows out and that's going to be the position you take to start your bench press technique. Now you'll see bench pressers like Jennifer Thompson who benches very wide elbows out. That's ideal for her and that's actually how I bench press too. And you'll see other bench pressers who bench press very narrow and very tucked with their elbows and yet they bench press at a very high level too. Again, there's no set way of doing it, but this is kind of the moderate in between area to start with and then over time you play with it. So again, there's just gonna be shoulders back and down, slight tuck to the elbows by bending that bar, but make sure you keep the elbows out in your mind as you're lowering the weight. If you just tuck your elbows, they're gonna look like little T-Rex arms down here and that's not gonna be good for strength or building muscle. So get up on this bar, get that grip width that allows you to be in that good position with that wrist joint over the elbow. And when you bring this bar out, the things I'm thinking about are shoulders back into the pads and down and I'm trying to bend this bar in half but again, I'm not over tucking like this. I'm letting the elbows stay out while I'm trying to torque this bar and bend it in half. So the position ends up like this and you have your elbows bent to about a 30 degree, to about 30 degrees of range of motion. 
If you over tuck, that's not going to be strong enough. And if you flare too much, if you're not built for a bench press like that, you're going to hurt your shoulder joint. So that's where I want the beginners to start with. Now let's get into the advanced technique stuff. All right, now let's get into the advanced uh, technique tips that I want to talk about. We're going to go over four different points. Uh, two of them are going to be based on grip width and two of them are going to be based on your elbow position or basically how much you uh, tuck in your shoulder joint. So first point is going to be a wider grip position with the uh, bench press is going to be a more pec dominant position and less overall range of motion and more lateral force transfer. So what does that mean? Basically the wider you go, the more pec recruitment you are going to get in the bench press. So for people who are more pec dominant like myself uh, and they, they kind of lag in the tricep or deltoid region, this might be a better position for you to go a little bit wider. Um, this is also going to reduce the overall range of motion. So for lankier lifters like myself, again, longer range of motion with the uh, long arms, that's going to mean uh, you're kind of working the bench press towards your weak point the less overall range of motion makes the bench press a little bit easier for me now what's bad about this position is there's more lateral force transfer this isn't necessarily a bad thing in general but it's bad for power lifting what lateral force transfer is going to mean is basically we're going to get more force transfer out to the sides the ends of the bar kind of like a sumo deadlift position the wider we go instead of the force transfer being directly transitioned linearly into a straight bar path it's going to go out laterally to the ends of the bar and that's going to make it harder on our triceps uh, and, and just overall uh, joint stacking a little bit worse. Now, the second point, we want, what I want to talk about is kind of the opposite. The more narrow grip position you take on the bar, there's going to be more delt and tri dominance to the lift. So you're going to take some of that pec out of it, and now it's going to be a little bit more deltoid and tricep dominant, and there's going to be a more overall range of motion. So that is worse, but for someone who's strong enough in this position, especially for someone who maybe is naturally stockier in their limbs, this may not be a bad thing because your overall range of motion is already going to be smaller than most people, and you may be playing this towards your dominance your deltoids and your tricep strength and taking the pec out of it a little bit if you have weaker pectoral muscles. Now, uh, again, less lateral force transfer with this movement pattern. Because the joints are more stacked, that elbow position is going to be closer to the wrist position in the bottom of the bench press as you exert force, there's going to be more of a linear, a straight force transfer to the bar instead of that lateral force transfer, which kind of gets wasted getting pushed out to the side. So there's give and take with both of these, and you want to pick your grip position based on what's going to uh, play to your strengths the best. So for me, because I am lankier arms and I'm more pec dominant, I'm going to go with a wider grip position because that makes my strongest muscles do the most work and it's also going to reduce the range of motion for my lanky damn arms. Now I will say with these two positions too, something you want to keep in mind is mobility. Usually the wider grip position is harder on the wrist and especially because I got skinny little wrists, sometimes it beats them up, but I'm able to work around it with wrist wraps and things like that and proper programming. Some people might not be able to put up with it even then. So if that's you, you might want to just suffer and be a little bit weaker on the bench press, but be able to bench press longer. So keep in mind things like that too. It's not just these that should govern your decision on how wide you grip the bar. Um, let's talk about point number three now in technique. This is going to get into your elbow position. So point number three, elbows more tucked is going to be a more tri-dominant position and it's more horizontal, horizontal bar path and there's also a lower touch point. So what does that mean? Basically when I'm in that bench press posi position, if I tuck the elbows more, especially if I get them really close to my sides, which no one should bench like that, but basically the closer my elbows come to touching my lats, the more tricep dominant the lift is gonna be. It takes away that humerus abduction of the pec muscle. So basically the pec, it adducts the arm, it brings it in, and when the elbow's tucked, that motion is kind of taken out. And so the pec doesn't fire as much and the tricep has to do a lot more. The deltoid also has to do a bit more in that position too. So the elbows more tucked is gonna equal a more tri-dominant lift. And it's also gonna need more of a horizontal bar path. This is because the more you tuck your elbows, the lower you have to touch on your stomach. If I'm very flared out and more pec dominant, I'm gonna have a higher touch point on my chest. But if the elbows come in, I'm gonna have to touch a lot lower. And so when I press the bench press back up, like we talked about in the How to Bench Like a Badass video series, we're gonna to have to get back to the shoulder line position at the top. Otherwise, we're gonna be in a bad spot of leverage. And because of this, because of the lower touch point, there's gonna be more horizontal movement to our bar path when we're benching a little bit more tucked. That could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your build. 
So again, someone who's a little bit more arm dominant, a little bit stockier in their limbs, more tricep dominant, you might do better with a more elbow tuck position. We don't have to tuck all the way into the, the lats. That was just a demonstration to explain that. But maybe if you're tucking 30 to 45 degrees, that might be best for you if you're a little bit more tricep dominant. As for me, I only tuck about 10 to 20 degrees, just enough to keep my shoulder joint safe, but to really allow the pec to do the most it can do. Now let's talk about point number four, elbows more flared, again, the opposite of what we just talked about, is going to equal more pec dominance and a more straight bar path. Again, because we have that higher touch point, because our elbows are more flared, we're not gonna have as much horizontal movement to the bar. This is a lot easier for some people, especially the more pec dominant people, the people who are gonna do better with the elbow flare position you might find that your bar path is a lot more straight because of that higher touch point. This could be a good thing, this could be a bad thing, it really depends. Again, there's no set answer here. The reason why I wanna talk about these four points and give you some understanding behind the biomechanics and the dominances of your natural bench press technique is because you can take these points and try all these different positions out and see what works best for you. And the reason why I wanna include this in with the beginner part is so that way all the beginner benchers out there who are just benching for the first time can have this in the back of their mind as they try different grip positions and elbow positions as they bench because you might find that over time you're a lot stronger in one of these positions than you thought you were in another. This actually just happened to me before my last mock meet. I changed my uh, positioning up with my elbows and I flared them a lot more and it, it literally caused me to do like a 15 pound PR on my bench even though I hadn't really been training the bench because I was injured during my last meet prep. So this stuff can go a long way and even someone as advanced as me making a slight technique change can mean a lot of pounds on the bar and um, just as much for like a bodybuilder who's looking for the actual like recruitment of their muscles, you can take these rules and apply this to your lifting and, and basing your form off what muscles you wanna target the most, what keeps you the safest and what it allows you the most progressive overload on the upper body when you're doing the bench press for like an overload movement. So I think that's it. I talked a lot. Hopefully that all stuck into your guys' minds. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.